So cycle thresholds are utilized in some of the platforms that we use, not all of them. The Thermo Fisher platform is, does use cycle thresholds. And we, we use two different ones depending on the manufacturer's guidance and whether or not we're utilizing the manual method or the automated method here. So the manual method cycles to 40 and this amplitude instrument will cycle to 37. Both of these are regulated by the FDA and dictated by the manufacturers and the scientists that created the test. It does not tell us that. It just tells us if it's present in the sample or not. If we would like to know how much genetic material is actually present in the sample, we would need to do a quantitative test. All of the methods that we use here in the lab are qualitative and just report out as detected or not detected. Yes, so the different CT values are, depend on the manufacturer and the test that you're utilizing. So for example, we talked about our Thermo Fisher system that we have here in the lab. This system will cycle to 37 in our automated method and our manual method will cycle to 40. So it just depends. Also, other methods don't utilize CT values. So for example, the Abbott system utilizes a cycle number and the TMA assay, the whole Hodgic Panther, uses a relative light unit. So there, there is variability among platforms, which is why we stick to the manufacturer's guidelines. A cycle is the process of replication and amplification within our system. It's a heating and cooling repeat that allows the specimen to increase in its detection limits. The cycle threshold is dependent on each specimen, and that's going to be when the virus becomes high enough for us to detect it and it crosses that positive threshold line. 